Although the Jaguar XC has been around since 2015, it's entirely possible that as a buyer of a compact to mid-size premium sports saloon, you might not have yet come across it. If that's the case, allow us to introduce you to this revised version which is smarter, quieter and classier inside than the original and remains appealingly different to the usual German suspects in this segment. On paper at least, it now seems to have the design, technology and ambition necessary to succeed in this sector with the dynamics of a BMW and the luxury of a Mercedes, plus the uh, efficiency and connectivity modern business buyers now expect. It's a surprisingly strong contender. At its original launch in 2015, Jaguar's XE, the brand's smallest saloon, was tasked with selling in bigger numbers than any Jaguar before it. It didn't. And the British brand has been scratching its head wondering why. They responded with this significantly revised version which offers more luxury, technology and value. Or, if you want us to put it another way, basically it's a car we should have had right from the start. It is perhaps a touch ironic that Jaguar's first modern era small saloon, the ill-fated X-Type of 2001, was a rather poor product that sold relatively well, while this XE, that rebranded Mondeo model's eventual successor, is a fundamentally good design that's rather floundered in the market. Just 40,000 were sold globally in this model's first four years of production. Just to give you a bit of perspective, that's about a tenth of the number of rival Mercedes C-Class models that Mercedes sells every 12 months. There hasn't been one significant failing responsible for holding the car back, more a series of smaller issues that have kept buyers loyal to German rivals. A rather drab interior, a lack of standout cabin technology, touchscreen communication and sat-nav features that really weren't very good at all, the lack of an estate body style, which would have been welcome given this saloon's tiny boot, and running cost figures which were slightly bettered by competitors. Quite a lot of this Jaguar thought it could fix without a complete redesign, hence the arrival of a much improved XE in the spring of 2019, and that's the car that we're going to look at here. The looks are more assertive, the cabin is more luxurious and sophisticated, uh, the engine and trim choices have been reduced and refined, plus there are a few things for the salespeople to get excited about. A clever clear sight camera driven rear view mirror and smart settings technology that uses artificial intelligence to set the car up for your preferences as you approach it. Efficiency has been prioritised too, uh, the Volume D180 variant being the first diesel car in its class to meet the EU's ultra-stringent RDE2 NOx emissions standard. And of course, all of this has been achieved without harming the one thing that people have always admired about this car, drive dynamics worthy of its historical positioning as a successor to Jaguar's iconic Mark II model of the 60s. The question is, though, whether all this will be enough to rejuvenate the XE's fortunes. It does, after all, have to contend with a brand new version of BMW 3 Series, plus substantially revised Mercedes C-Class and Audi A4 models. In short, further headway in this segment will be difficult to achieve. Can this improved XE manage it? Well, let's go and find out. So, what's it like? Well, it's sporting, certainly. You sit low down in contour-hugging seats in front of a chunky sports steering wheel and a pistol-grip-style gear lever borrowed from Jaguar's F-Type sports car. It's a driver's environment, a place to do business with the road, with the raised centre console adding to the cockpit-style feel. Set off and you get to experience what Jaguar's engineers call the 50 metre feel, that all important first impression that any vehicle conveys about the way it'll drive. This one feels sharp, purposeful and from the very start beautifully composed over our country's terrible tarmac. Now we'll get to that uh, after we've covered the engineering changes made to this revised model which won't take very long because there aren't many. Uh, there didn't need to be actually. Most of the work that's 
has gone on here has had to do with refinement. That's been enhanced thanks to improvements in body sealing, extra sound deadening, and an acoustically laminated windscreen. And the result is a level of cabin quietness that's noticeably better than was the case with the old model. Even with the diesel engine we've got here, there's only one. Uh, a simplification of the model lineup has removed the previous 163 and 240 horsepower versions of Jaguar's two litre four cylinder Ingenium black pump fueled engine, uh, leaving just the mid level D180 derivative that we're trying here, which isn't of much consequence really because it's the variant that most buyers in search of a unit like that would have chosen anyway. A decent 430 Newton meter torque figure, a propeller this XE in this form with reasonable vigor. 62 from rest occupies 7.6 seconds on the way to 140 miles an hour and that's whether you choose the rear driven version or the alternative all-wheel drive variant that we're trying here. Like all versions of this Jaguar, both only drive through an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. Sales of the manual gearbox versions of the original XE models were vanishingly small so that option's been deleted too. The engine colour has been equally swinging in the petrol part of the lineup, uh, where the old entry level P200 2 litre model and the flagship XES 3 litre supercharged V6 variant have both been deleted from our market. As with the diesel derivative, uh, you have to have 2 litre 4 cylinder power, but here there's a choice either the rear driven only entry level P250 version which makes 62 in 6.2 seconds on the way to 155 miles an hour or if you want the power to exploit the impressive handling reserves uh, that we'll briefly on in a moment there's a top P300 derivative which improves that sprint figure to 5.4 seconds and comes only with all-wheel drive which does give it an advantage over its rear driven direct rivals like the Mercedes C300 and the BMW 330i. That's it for uh, your engine options with this car, unless you count the uber rare XESV Project 8 version with its supercharged 592 horsepower petrol V8. That car, which Jaguar built to successfully take the Nurburgring Nordschleife lap record for fast saloons, is only available to special order and you won't buy it because it costs £150,000. But engineering design studies like that have certainly helped in perfecting this car's drive dynamics because they are exceptional. Now we thought so when it first arrived back in 2015 and nothing's changed our opinion since. Now much of this is down to the suspension. It's a setup which contributes much to this car's sublime balance of ride and handling. And now most competitors use a simple McPherson strut front arrangement, but Jaguar's engineers insisted on a more advanced double wishbone configuration. Uh, the so-called integral link rear springing setup is more sophisticated too. Uh, it's a multi-link rear axle as per the class standard, but here it's one offering the kind of combination of lateral and longitudinal stiffness that you'd normally only find in a powerful sports car. The result is a combination of supple stiffness that uh, soaks up tears in the tarmac, yet really does deliver a sports car style connection with the road ahead that no rival can better. So good is it that the usual caveats we tend to make in uh, these reviews about avoiding larger alloy wheel sizes and stiffer sports suspension don't really need quite as much emphasis here. In a rather less positive piece of news for Jaguar's bottom line, we'd also say that the setup is good enough to to alleviate any real need for the optional Adaptive Dynamics Adaptive Suspension System that allows you to adjust the ride in order to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. It's just as well that the suspension setup works so effectively because the designers behind this car have sacrificed quite a lot in order to accommodate it, uh, primarily the weight savings achieved as part of this model's aluminium intensive architecture. Now, impressively, over 75% of this XE structure is fashioned from aluminium and probably even more of it would have been had the engineers not needed to weight up the back end a bit uh, with a few heavier steel items to hit the perfect 50-50 weight distribution that's needed for ultimate driving satisfaction in this class. Make no mistake about it, that ultimate driver's car accolade is what the Jaguar brand were aiming at here and the brand still reckons that this model can match or better BMW 3 Series as the most rewarding steer in the segment. 
That is quite a claim, but we can see many XE owners feeling it to be justified. There's still a sense of sharp alacrity and connectedness uh, that you get at the wheel of a 3 Series that nothing else can quite match, but this Jaguar gets closer to that dynamic benchmark than any C-Class or Audi A4 has ever done. And in the process, it delivers ride quality that betters that of the BMW. Uh, the feelsome electric steering setup also adds to the feeling of connectedness. It's beautifully weighted uh, with a progressive build-up of feel as you turn into a corner and a gentle self-centering action. Uh, this car just loves to change direction and that's something aided by the standard torque vectoring by braking setup that helps to get the power down through really sharp corners. This car though is really at its best, not on a tight rally stage style back road but uh, on a route with quick sweeping open bends over which it sweeps imperiously from turn to turn, soaking up undulations with perfect poise. It is an impressive showing and it won't be diluted if you opt for the all-wheel drive system which adds just 85 kilos to the curb weight. Now this usually biases torque to the back wheels for handling balance but it uh, pushes it forward when rear grip is limited or when you're really pushing on through the turns on damper days. If you are going to drive like that, then you'll want the car to be as much in the mood as you are. And that's something that's aided by the XE's standard Jaguar drive control system. One of those setups expected in this segment that can alter throttle response, steering feel and auto gear shift change timings dependent on the way that you want to drive. If you've ignored our earlier comment and you have specified the Adaptive Dynamics variable damping package, it'll alter suspension feel too. Jaguar drive control Control allows you to change the behavior of the car across various different settings with the standard comfort and fuel efficient eco modes being the ones that you'll use most often. Uh, that is of course once you've had a play with the dynamic setting that turns the instrument cluster red and as advertised sharpens the throttle response and weights up the steering for when you're pressing on. The brand has also given a laudable amount of thought to this XE's suitability for slippery conditions, borrowing technology from uh, JLR's Land Rover division to do that. All versions of this Jaguar get as standard an ASPC, All Surface Progress Control System, which works as a kind of uh, low speed cruise control at speeds of up to 19 miles an hour on difficult surfaces like snow, ice, uh, wet grass or mud. Uh, you simply set the speed uh, that you want to go Go, you steer and you leave the car to take care of the rest. Uh, that works in concert with an extra mode setting on the Jaguar drive control badged rain, ice, snow. Uh, that's a winter orientated option that dampens the acceleration and applies more gradual traction on low grit surfaces. On an all wheel drive XC like the one we're trying here, this setting can be replaced at extra cost by an optional ADSR, Adaptive Surface Response System. ADSR is based around the clever terrain response setup that you get in Land Rover models and it adapts the maps of the throttle, the transmission and the DSC stability systems to suit the surface that you're traveling over. So it's all good. Well, not quite. There are inevitably areas where the age of this design does rather show. The 8-speed ZF Auto transmission offers smooth changes, but there are times when it doesn't respond quite as quickly as you'd like to sudden needs for extra forward motion. And that means that you often find yourself using the gear shift paddles in circumstances where, in most rivals, you'd merely leave the auto software to do its thing. Other issues will perhaps be less noticeable unless you've tried the latest version of rival models. Uh, the optional head-up display shows uh, less information than setups of this kind uh, now usually do. There is nothing particularly innovative in terms of camera-driven safety tech and there's a virtual absence of the kind of uh, semi-autonomous driving technology which is now creeping into this car's German competitors. But hey, come on, I mean, autonomous driving in an XC, you can almost hear the Coventry Company's engineers shuddering. This car's an old school sports saloon. We like it for that, and you may well too. Jaguar claims to have reinvented the XE, which is something of an exaggeration, but there is little doubt that this revised version has a more assertive air than its predecessor. Every model now gets 
Bedia LED headlights, sleeker LED tail lamps and alloy wheels of at least 18 inches in size. Like its sports saloon predecessor, the company's classic Mark II model of the 60s, it remains a cutting edge design. It's still the only car in its class to use an aluminium intensive monocoque. And that's part of the brand's lightweight modular vehicle architecture. Well, this sculpted bonnet testifies to Jaguar's expertise in working with aluminium, flowing into the sleeker, narrower headlamps we mentioned, which now feature a striking J-blade uh, daytime running light signature, and can, as here, be upgraded to intelligent matrix status so that they adapt to road conditions. Factor in this sharply raked windscreen and this now slimmer but slightly wider mesh grille and you have all the ingredients for the kind of overtaking presence that a sports saloon like this really needs. That's uh, something further emphasised by these wider corner outlets which flank a wider, slimmer, lower air intake. In profile, the shape, as before, is simple but effective with powerful rear haunches and an XF-style coupe-like swept-back silhouette, which uh, facilitates this model's status as the most aerodynamic Jaguar ever made. Unlike this model's German rivals, there's no estate variant. Now, Jaguar thinks that market is sufficiently covered at this price point by its E-Pace SUV. So we're left with this uh, single saloon version, a car with two feature lines defining its sharp be drawn flanks, although these creases are so subtle that their impact can be lost with some of the colours on offer. Uh, there is a lower swage line rising from the bumper along the flanks and culminating at the tail, and a higher, more accentuated line that takes as its starting point are these Jaguar branded chrome side vents, one of the many design cues borrowed from the company's F type sports car. Uh, further evidence of uh, performance technology lies with front bumper ducts that channel airflow over the surface of the front wheels uh, to reduce drag. Now these alloy rims in question vary between 18 and 20 inches in size. We have the 19 inch 10 spoke wheels fitted here. Uh, the rear end isn't quite as striking. There's a very Audi-like feel here with short cropped overhangs, a neatly integrated spoiler and a restyled lower valance incorporating proper twin tailpipes. The F-Type cues continue back here. Uh, that model has apparently inspired the look of these restyled high-intensity LED tail lights that feature a chicane design that sees a roundel bisected by a horizontal line. More distinctive is the high-mounted central brake light, a beautifully integrated full LED blade that spans the full width of the rear screen's top edge. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see. Now, we've already referenced the use of aluminium, which accounts for 75% of the structure. Only the boot floor and the uh, suspension subframes are fashioned from steel. Uh, this sophisticated IQ AL platform ought to make the XC significantly lighter than its competitors. But what it actually does is to compensate for Jaguar's use of quite a weighty but technically advanced suspension setup. And that ensures that this car tips the scales at about the same 1500 kilo curb weight that you find in a rival BMW 3 Series. Uh, to give you some class perspective, an XE is slightly shorter, wider and lower than one of those and considerably less classy inside. Or at least it used to be. Time to take a seat at the wheel. But before we do, let's reference an element of fresh technology that we really like that's now been made available to XE buyers. Avoid entry-level trim and your Jaguar will come equipped with the brand's super clever smart setting system uh, that uses artificial intelligence algorithms to learn your driving preferences. Things like seat position plus music and climate settings and they adjust themselves as you approach the car. Now, even Jaguar admits that the original version of this car didn't get the cabin it deserved. Back in 2015, we told you that you'd need to spend quite a bit in here to get the kind of smart, quality ambiance that you'd enjoy in obvious German rivals. And Jaguar really didn't help itself by stripping out from the final production model various charming XF-derived touches originally scheduled for inclusion. Uh, things like motorised air vents uh, and a one-touch glove box opening. Hence the need for a thorough rethink 
duly, that is what we've got in this heavily revised XE. Predictably, perhaps, it is still a slight step down from what you get in an XF, but the far more extensive use of uh, soft touch materials and a completely different level of infotainment technology is just about enough to create an interior that at last is a match for its upmarket rivals. Some of the changes will only be really evident to long-time XE owners. Things like the redesigned door cards that free up fractionally greater space for your elbows, and the replacement of that awful old circular transmission selector with a pistol grip style gear stick from the brand's F-Type sports car. As before, you sit almost as low as you would in that model. Uh, you're here cocooned by a wide center console fashioned with stitched leather and piano black trimming, uh, which creates a far more cockpit style feel than you get in Rivals. Now whether you're familiar with the XE or not, it's the infotainment technology that'll probably grab your attention first. And that's particularly if you're in a top spec model like this one that features the brand's Touch Pro Duo twin screen setup. Lesser variants get it with uh, just this single upper 10 inch screen. Touch Pro technology is part of Jaguar's vision for a buttonless future, where most of the controls lie in menus behind tough and glass, but when this 5.5 inch lower screen is fitted, you still retain an important analog element, courtesy of these two large configurable rotary dials that float above it. Both primarily deal with cabin temperature, or when pushed, uh, with seat climate functions. And the right-hand one can also be pulled to alter fan speed. Uh, this bottom screen can also show phone settings and your chosen audio setup too. Thankfully, a separate proper volume dial has been provided near the gear stick uh, for that, so you don't have to uh, just stab away at a touch screen or at a steering wheel button. Uh, we would like to have seen the addition of Audi-style haptic touch feedback, though. Uh, as it is, you often have to take your eyes off the road for too long to see exactly what it is you're selecting. And that's something that's exacerbated by the placement of this lower screen just a little too far down the centre stack. In most other respects, though, these screens work beautifully, offering you the ability to better configure the functions that you want to prioritize. Uh, for example, it's perfectly possible for the driver to view a navigation map on the upper display while your passenger adjusts media settings on the one below. Uh, you simply can't do that with the single monitor that rivals offer. Uh, we love the graphic definition. Plus, Jaguar now at last includes the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems, uh, which every rival offers, as well as its own in-control apps package. Lots of screen options then, uh, so many in fact that you probably need an evening or two with the manual to get your head around all the various screen choices. Anything the Touch Pro setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the instruments that you view through the redesigned iPace derived sports steering wheel, above which you can also have an optional head up display projecting key commands onto the bottom of the windscreen there. In place of the conventional analog dials that you'll still find on an XE with entry level spec, plush models like this one now feature the kind of all digital instrument binnacle which has been a design feature on larger Jaguars for some time. Uh, this 12.3 inch interactive driver display isn't quite as intuitive as uh, say the virtual cockpit setup you'll find in a rival Audi, but there are lots of configurable options all controlled by switches on the wheel. Now, these allow you to view either one or two dials together with formats which uh, prioritize either navigation, trip computer, media or driver assistance info alongside them. Or you can fill the uh, binnacle screen with a full map layout. It's up to you. What else? Well, uh, it's thankfully no longer possible to find yourself in an XE with a very un like standard of cabin trim. Features like uh, branded tread plates, uh, frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, chromed seat switches and premium carpet mats, they've all been standardized, as has ambient interior lighting, which wraps around these smart metal finished air vents that extend the fascia to nestle into the door casings. Grained leather upholstery that's also included and the front seats feature standard 12-way electrical adjustment uh, and that helps with uh, quickly finding an ideal driving position, as does the extensive level of steering wheel adjustment. 
Rearward vision could be better though. Uh, thank the shallow rear window for that. So it's just as well that Jaguar includes standard rear parking sensors and a rear view camera across the range, along with an auto parking park assist system on most models too. Uh, now, none of these features will help much with rear vision at ordinary road speeds, of course, but for a little extra, Jaguar can now sell you a feature that does. Uh, so let's say you're carrying lanky passengers that obscure your view out back. Now, with this clear sight feature fitted to the rear view mirror, uh, you can simply click the mirror surface into a roof camera fed widescreen view of the road behind. Earlier, we mentioned the feature that perhaps most characterizes this car's cabin, its wide center console. Well, that's been redesigned for this revised model. Uh, this slatted sliding top now covers the twin cup holders in an area that also includes a 12 volt socket and a coin tray. A higher set lidded storage box sits just behind, incorporating twin US beads, a micro SIM slot, and another 12 volt port. Uh, there's also a further storage area at the base of the center stack, which can include incorporate a wireless phone charging mat. It is a pity that the door card redesign couldn't have brought us deeper bins though. Uh, they're still pretty shallow, although a 500ml bottle will fit. Uh, the glove box, which incorporates a pen clip, that is decently sized, plus there's an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, and there are ticket clips here on the sun visors. Right. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now here, the uh, rear doors open nice and wide to help alleviate any possible issues with clonking your head uh, as you maneuver around the coupe style rear roof line. And once inside, well, our expectations weren't high here. In their anxiousness to avoid a sizing overlap with the larger XF saloon, Jaguar's designers made this car one of the shorter contenders in the class. An ADA 4, for example, is 54 mils longer, which was always going to affect the rear cabin. It's as tight in the back of an XE as it always was. The ambiance not helped by the way that the high rear deck initially imbues a slightly claustrophobic feel. Once you get yourself comfortable though, uh, maybe fold down this center armrest with its twin cup holders and stretch your elbows out a bit, uh, you'll find it is a little more spacious than it first appears. Even if you're a six footer sitting behind a front occupant of similar stature, you should be fine on all but the longest trips. Thanks in part to the way the designers have made the very most of the limited space on offer with touches like these deeply scalloped seat backs. Lankier folk will find their heads brushing the ceiling liner though. Uh, as usual in this segment, this is a rear bench that's better suited to the needs of two people rather than three, uh, thanks not only to the restricted vehicle width, but also to this chunky transmission tunnel. Uh, the situation is similar though with all obvious rivals. A compact executive saloon is after all inevitably just that. Uh, twin vents, a small storage compartment and a 12 volt socket sit over that central tunnel. Plus there are netted seat back pockets, overhead reading lights and shallow bins in the smartly furnished doors with their double stitched uh, pull handles and piano black trimming. Finally, let's take a look at the cargo area. Now, this can be accessed via an optional gesture controlled boot lid, which you don't really need because uh, even without electrical operation, the boot lid snaps open with a touch on the appropriate key fob button. Now, despite the fact that the dimensions of this car are unchanged in this facelifted form, Jaguar has managed somehow to make the trunk area smaller. Previously rated at 455 litres, it's now just 410 litres in size. Uh, to give you some perspective, the class average is around 480 litres. And that's despite the fact that no standard spare wheels provided. Poke around the compartmentalised space beneath the boot floor and all you'll find is a tyre inflation kit. If you do want to pay extra for a spare, then be prepared to lose quite a lot of trunk space because fitting one requires a fitment of a raised boot floor. Now, although this area might be a touch more compact than before, the designers claim that it's now a more useful shape. And sure enough, it is still big enough uh, for a big golf bag or alternatively a couple of big suitcases and an assortment of small holdalls. Uh, getting your stuff in will be slightly impeded by the narrow opening and uh, also by the shallowness of the load bay. But at the same time, it'll also be aided by this uh, relatively low loading lip. 
Boot usability, meanwhile, is enhanced by the usual things, bag hooks to the left and the right, the usual tie-down points, and a recessed area on the left. Now, if you've specified the retractable tow bar, the buttons to extend that sit neatly on the cargo sidewall here on the right. Uh, curiously, though, the add blue filling point is here on the left, rather than being incorporated into the fuel filler as it more usually is. If you need more room for luggage, then you'll have to pay extra to get the 40-20-40 split folding rear bench that most will want for the accommodation of longer items. And it's at this point that some potential buyers might well be tempted to take a walk over to the other side of their Jaguar showroom and size up the brand's larger but only slightly more expensive XF model, which offers a 540 litre boot and standard split folding seats. Jaguar has taken a size to the XE range, slimming it down to the models that sold in reasonable numbers the first time around and deleting the versions that didn't. As before, there's only this single saloon body style and the brand's 8-speed ZF Forte gearbox is now mandatory. All the engines are now 2 litres and 4 cylinders in size and there are far fewer of them. Amongst the casualties are the previous entry-level petrol and diesel variants, the old P200 and D163 derivatives, which partly explains why the price starting point for the range is now up at nearly £34,000. In compensation, Jaguar has slightly reduced the price of individual models at the same time as significantly improving the standard spec, but we'll get to that. The lineup's most affordable variant is the base P250 petrol model, which comes in a single rear-driven form. Most customers, though, will prefer to find the £640 premium necessary to go beyond that power plant and get the sole remaining XE diesel variant, the D180, that we're trying here. Uh, from the launch of this updated range, a D180 required a budget of around £35,000. That's for a rear-driven version. For £1,860 more, you could have the same car with Jaguar's all-wheel drive system. As for high-performance mainstream variants, well, following the sad demise of the old supercharged V6-powered XES model, there's now only one, a P300 variant, which has to be had with all-wheel drive and which requires a starting budget at around the £40,000 price point. Did we say one? Well, that's not quite true. Hidden away in the Coventry Makers portfolio is a model called the XE SV Project 8, a track-focused super saloon built as the world's fastest four-door. It packs a 592 HP supercharged V8 and it has a list price of around £150,000. Yes, really. And we're still not quite sure whether Jaguar has ever sold one. Back in the real world, however, XE buyers will be choosing between three levels of trim, S, SE, or as here, HSE. Whichever you prefer, your dealer will then give you the option of specifying your car with an optional Sporty R Dynamic Pack for around £1,600 more. We think carefully here because if the XE variant you've chosen is rear-driven, then that pack will non-negotiably equip your Jaguar with a stiffer sports suspension setup that you may not want if your priorities lie more with the M4 than with Monza. So try before you buy. Other R dynamic inclusions are aesthetic, a smarter bumper, a revised rear valance, bespoke side sills, a special grille badge, and 10 split-spoke gloss black wheels. Inside, the R Dynamic Pack gets you sport seats trimmed in perforated leather with contrast stitching, plus a sport steering wheel with satin chrome gear shift paddles, uh, also an ebony headliner and branded metal tread plates. Now earlier we mentioned this car's improved value proposition. Uh, to give you a perspective on that, let's take as an example what would probably be the lineup's strongest seller, a D180S spec variant fitted with that R Dynamic pack, a car that at the launch of this revised XC lineup would set you back just over £36,000. Now Jaguar is keen to point out that this version's list price is £670 less than a comparable D180R Sport variant in the pre-facelifted range despite the fact that over £1,100 worth of extra equipment has been added into this revised design. That's a customer saving of £1,770. 
Now, you may or may not be convinced by that, but either way, you're probably going to want to know a little more about the kind of overall competitor-orientated value proposition that XE pricing represents. Now, we should perhaps start by pointing out that affordable versions of Jaguar's larger XF model don't actually cost very much more than their XE counterparts. A D180XF costs only around £1,000 more than a D180XE. Although, if you ascend the XF range, and you look at the plush uh, Pokia variants, the price differential between XE and XF ownership widens considerably. Uh, the other Jag that you might be considering at this price point is the brand's E-Pace compact SUV. One of those with the same engine as a comparable XE would be nearly the same price. For our purposes here, though, we'll assume that you want a compact executive saloon rather than a full-sized four-door or any sort of crossover. And we'll also assume that you're sizing up the possibility of XE ownership against the propositions on offer from the more established contenders in the class, principally BMW 3 Series, Audi's A4, the Mercedes C-Class and Alfa Romeo's Giulia. And maybe also some uh, less popular segment entrants like Volvo's S60 and the Lexus IS. Now, if you're one of those people who initially looked at the price list of this Jag with a bit of a sharp intake of breath, you might be interested to know that in volume D180 diesel form, it's actually been priced fractionally below equivalent versions of two of its most direct rivals, the Mercedes C220D and the Audi A4 35TDI. And this Jaguar comes as standard with equipment that you'd have to pay thousands more for on those two cars. An equivalent BMW 320D or Alfa Romeo Giulia 2.2 litre turbo diesel 160 horsepower model might save you a few hundred pounds up front, but those cars too would cost you significantly more if you were to equip them to the standard of an XE. It's a similar story with the base P250 petrol model. Even the top P300 petrol all-wheel drive derivative has something to be said for it from a value perspective. Its £40,000 required budget would certainly also buy you slightly better performing BMW 330i or Mercedes C300 models, but those cars can't be had with all-wheel drive. The other two contenders that we mentioned in this class will probably be quickly dismissed by most likely segment buyers. Uh, most Volvo S60 models are sold in petrol T5 250 HP form. And in this guise, that Swedish saloon is thirsty. It's not especially fun to drive and it costs around £4,000 more than an equivalent XC P250. So, not tempting. Uh, the Lexus IS, meanwhile, comes only in self-charging petrol hybrid form, in which, guys, you save around £2,500 over, say, an XE D180 diesel. But that Lexus model's electrified powertrain has to be had with a frustratingly inconsistent CVT auto gearbox, which blunts the car's drive dynamics to what a potential Jaguar buyer would probably think would be an unacceptable degree. Once you've taken that into account and then consider this Jaguar's impressive balance of ride, handling and diesel efficiency, you might feel quite tempted by one. But before making a final decision, you're going to need to know exactly how generous the Coventry company has been with the standard equipment. So let's take a look at that now. Key upgrades made to standard spec with this car see even the entry-level S-trimmed versions get features that you'd previously have had to pay extra for at the foot of the range. Things like full LED headlights with auto high beam assist, 18-inch alloy wheels, LED tail lights, leather upholstery, 12-way electrically adjustable front seats, uh, a rear view camera and classy ambient interior lighting. These features are in addition to all the kit that previous XE buyers might be familiar with from before. Uh, the sort of stuff you'd expect from an executive sedan in this class. So you can tick off auto headlamps and wipers, uh, all-round parking sensors, cruise control with a speed limiter and heated powered mirrors. Inside, there's dual zone climate control, there's an auto dimming rear view mirror, premium carpet mats and a Jaguar drive control system which allows you to alter steering feel, throttle response and the change times of the auto gearbox to suit the way that you want to drive. Four modes are provided, eco, comfort, dynamic and a rain, ice, snow setting. In addition, uh, also still included across the range is the brand's clever ASPC, All Surface Progress Control Traction Management System. Now that's there to give you some extra peace of mind in the winter 
into months. And that's particularly if you've opted for a rear-driven model like this one. Now, ASPC is effectively a kind of low-speed cruise control, which is ideal for low-grip surfaces like snow-covered driveways and ungritted winter roads. The system functions between 2 and 19 miles an hour, and it's operated by cruise control switches on the steering wheel. Uh, the driver simply sets the required speed, and the ASPC system takes care of the rest, ensuring smooth progress without skidding and without the driver touching the pedals. It's really neat. What about infotainment? Well, that's accessed via a large size 10 inch Touch Pro Center Dash infotainment monitor, uh, your access point for a whole range of features. Incorporated stuff includes a 125 watt six speaker DAB audio system, along with Bluetooth phone connectivity and a whole range of vehicle access data. All of these features operable either through the pinch and swipe touchscreen by voice or by buttons on the leather covered multifunction steering wheel. Uh, you can connect your USB sticks and iPods into this setup and you can use it via a standard in-control app setup to download a whole series of clever smartphone apps. Uh, there's now standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring too. You also get SatNav of course, Jaguar calls its setup Connected Navigation Pro and it does quite a lot. Uh, once you've planned your route, it lets you share your ETA with your friends, uh, see what the traffic's like on your way to your destination, uh, get travel tips and search surrounding areas for places of interest. Connected Navigation Pro can get you to your destination even when a GPS signal is lost and that's thanks to clever dead reckoning functionality. And there is an incorporated commute mode. Now that can learn your daily drive and then it will suggest alternative routes which will avoid congestion. A companion app can even get you to the door of your destination address once you've parked your SE and you're all ready to complete the last few yards of your journey on foot. Uh, all of this comes with standard S-Spec, but of course, ideally, you'd want to go beyond baseline trim in choosing your XE. Uh, pay a premium of around £1,500 over the entry-level S-Spec, and you'll be upgraded to a mid-level SE model, which you would want if you were attracted by the thought of the interactive driver display digital instrument cluster, and that's standard from this trim level upwards. And a much higher level of media connectivity too. The online pack included with SE Spec allows you to create in your XE a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot for up to eight electronic devices, and it incorporates the brand's super clever smart setting system, which uses artificial intelligent algorithms to learn your driving preferences, uh, things like seat positions, plus music and climate settings, which adjust themselves as you approach the car. Now at this level in the range, uh, there is also a remote feature which allows you to interact with your XE from anywhere with a data connection via the brand's freely downloadable in-control remote app. Now using this, uh, you'll be able to see your car's data remotely from fuel levels to door and window status. Plus you'll be able to do things like set the perfect cabin temperature in advance, uh, find your XE quickly in a crowded car park and secure your car from a distance. The other key standard SE spec feature is the park pack, consisting of 360 degree parking, a park assist system to steer you into perpendicular or parallel spaces, and a rear traffic monitor to warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking bay. Plus, at this level in the range, you also get keyless entry and some smarter 18 inch wheel designs. Now there's also traffic sign recognition, which works with an adaptive speed limiter. Now that automatically sets the speed limiter on the car to the current prevailing speed limit. So if that feature has been set, you should never get a speeding ticket ever again, in theory anyway. Should you go further up the XE trim hierarchy and stretch to the top HSE spec we have here? Well, you'll need to do that if you want the much trumpeted Touch Pro Duo double screen layout fitted as standard. Uh, this setup adds a second 5.5 inch lower center stack display that primarily gives you digital control of all the climate functions. An HSE model enhances the upholstery to softer perforated Windsor leather and it upgrades the audio system to a 380 watt Meridian setup. 
Uh, the front seats get 16-way electric adjustment, heating and a memory function. The wheels are larger 19-inch rims and you get a drive pack which gives you blind spot assist along with adaptive cruise control. Plus, it also builds on the standard autonomous braking functionality which we're going to get onto in just a moment uh, with a high-speed emergency braking system. Enough on standard spec, what about options? Well, a key one is the 40-20-40 split rear bench, which allows you to push longer items through from the boot. That's an important extra given this car's relatively restricted trunk space. Otherwise, your first port of call when it comes to spending more on your XE will probably be the various extra cost packs that Jaguar offers to bundle together key items. Uh, now, bear in mind that many of the pack items that we're just about to mention can also be ordered individually. Individually. Now let's start with the technology pack because it includes an additional feature added to this revised model that Jaguar is rather proud of, the clever ClearSight interior rear view mirror. At the click of a switch, this allows you to switch that mirror's surface to a rearward feed from a little roof-mounted camera if your normal view behind is obscured, say by tall rear-seated passengers or perhaps by leaves or streaming water on the back window glass. Uh, the technology pack also includes includes a solar attenuating windscreen, a wireless charging mat and a head-up display. Plus, if uh, the trim level that you've chosen for your XE doesn't already include the lower Touch Pro Duo center screen and the interactive driver display digital instrument cluster, then this pack will throw those in too. Talking of things your chosen spec level might not have, if you've uh, stuck with base S trim, you might want to add things like the interactive driver display, digital instrument cluster, uh, power folding mirrors, and that park pack that we mentioned earlier with its surround camera, its auto parking, and rear traffic monitor features. Across the range, you might also be interested in the optional convenience pack. Now that will give you a powered gesture boot lid, uh, an electrically adjustable steering column, uh, additional power sockets, and if your XE doesn't already have it, keyless entry too. Now here we have additionally got the cold climate pack. Now that will give you a heated windscreen, headlight power wash, and a heated steering wheel too. Other luxury options include a sliding panoramic sunroof, an electric rear window sunblind, front seat cooling, heated rear seats, a powered steering column, a cabin air ionizer, an air quality sensor, and a park heat system with a remote control so you can be cooling or warming your XE's interior before you get into it. Audio upgrades include two Meridian sound systems, the 380 watt package that we referenced on the HSE model, or if that's not enough, a really desirable desirable thumping 850 watt setup. If you want, there's a TV tuner available too. As for driving stuff, well, Jaguar's offering its Adaptive Dynamics Variable Damping System, which allows you to alter suspension feel. Now, this setup uses sensors which analyze body movement 100 times a second and wheel movement 500 times a second, ensuring that the damping should always be perfectly suited for the way that you want to drive. It works through the various modes of the Jaguar Drive Control Driving Mode System that we mentioned earlier, and it can, at extra cost, be embellished with a further configurable dynamics mode which allows you to set up specific personal preferences with regards to throttle, steering and suspension feel. Uh, now you can order these two features separately or as part of a dynamic handling pack which also includes red brake calipers, bigger 350mm front brake discs and a boot lid spoiler. On an all-wheel drive model, particularly if we were thinking of towing, we'd also want to consider the brand's optional ADSR, Adaptive Surface Response System, which is based around the clever terrain response system that you'll get in a Land Rover model. Uh, this replaces the Jaguar Drive System's rain, ice, snow mode and adapts the maps of the throttle, the transmission and the DSC stability systems to suit the surfaces that you're travelling over. Perfect for muddy car parks. Uh, we'd also want to consider the clever Matrix headlights, which have been fitted here. Uh, these are capable of keeping your XE on full beam without dazzling surrounding traffic. 
Onto aesthetics, wheel rim sizes tend to be key for XE buyers, so there's a wider than usual range of different alloy designs on offer in sizes from 18 to 20 inches. Uh, whatever your rim choice, don't forget to add in locking wheel nuts. Uh, onto paintwork, now unless you want your XE finished in solid Narvik black or Fuji white, you'll have to pay extra for solid Caldera red or one of the various metallic finishes. There are seven shades on offer. We have Iger grey here, plus two further premium metallic hues of Carpathian grey and silicon silver. If you want your XC to have a meaner look, then you could opt for privacy glass and maybe also for the black pack, which adds a gloss black finish to the front grille, the window surrounds and to the side vents. Uh, these elements are available separately or you can have the side vents and the mirror covers uh, finished off in carbon fibre. Those mirrors can also be finished in chrome. Uh, for the cabin, you could add the interior upgrade pack, which gives you illuminated tread plates, bright metal pedals, and an extra configurable feature for the ambient lighting. You might also want the classy ebony Mortzine headliner, and possibly one of the more exclusive trimming inlay packages. Uh, choose from aluminium, gloss ebony, uh, gloss ash burr, or carbon fiber. Satin chrome gear shift paddles are available too, and you can add in softer, perforated Windsor leather if the trim level that you've chosen doesn't have that. And beyond that, well, if we were buying, there are a few things that we might want to put aside a little extra budget for. Uh, bear in mind that a space saver spare wheel costs extra, so you'll need to budget for that if, in the event of a puncture, you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road there with one of those irritating tyre inflation kits. Uh, other practical features that you might want to specify include a powered boot lid, uh, plus for the load area, a luggage retainer, a floor net, a collapsible luggage organiser, a rubber mat and a rubber liner. Uh, you can add in seat back stowage. You can add in a second row seat protection cover, a central armrest cooler warmer, and the modular click and go system for the rear of the front seats, onto which can be clipped hooks, hangers, uh, tray tables, or tablet mounts. A power socket pack is available, and you can have splash guards, a rear bumper protector, a rechargeable torch, and a smoker's pack if you haven't kicked the habit yet. Uh, roof crossbars will allow you to specify a roof box or a sleeker sports box, plus carriers for bikes, skis, snowboards and water sports equipment. Uh, there's a choice of tow bars, detachable or electrically deployable, and if you choose one, you can add in a bike carrier to that. Right, on to safety. Uh, the XE's body shell is intrinsically very strong. High strength alloys are used in areas like the A pillars, the front and rear crash structures, and the cant rail. The B pillars are fashioned from high strength aluminium, reinforced with ultra high strength steel with a layer of high density foam in between. All of this makes the passenger compartment exceptionally stiff, preventing intrusions in the event of a collision. In terms of passive safety provision, there's all the usual features that you'd expect. Twin front, side and curtain airbags, although strangely, no driver's knee bag. Uh, Icefix charge seat fastenings too, a tyre pressure monitoring system and a pedestrian friendly bonnet. Anti-lock braking is aided by an emergency brake assist system uh, for panic stops, which will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard lights. Plus, there's EDC, engine drag torque control, which reduces the chance of wheel lockup, as uh, might be caused by strong engine braking in slippery conditions, say if you selected too low a gear on a greasy road. Uh, there's also a torque vectoring by braking setup, which helps to get the power down through the corners, and hill launch assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. All well and good, but what about the kind of clever camera-driven safety features that feature in all this model's main rivals? Well, of course, the XE has these too, courtesy of a forward-facing stereo camera mounted in front of the rear-view mirror there with a lens which can detect vehicles up to 100 metres away. Uh, fitted as standard across the range is an emergency braking system which scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential collision hazards, whether they be vehicles, 
vehicles or pedestrians. Uh, now, if such a thing's detected, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then braking will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, a pedestrian detection feature is an incorporated part of that system and it works at between 3 and 37 miles an hour. In addition, all XE models get a lane keep assist system that will alert dozy drivers if they're veering out of their lanes on the highway and which will apply subtle steering lock to ease the car back to where it ought to be. Uh, there's also forward traffic detection, uh, which provides an extra layer of security when the driver has difficulty viewing other vehicles, such as when you're pulling away at an obscured junction. Uh, the system's able to detect the cross movement of other vehicles and it provides a visual warning on the central screen. Uh, what other safety features are fitted as standard? Well, there's a driver condition monitor which will continually check your driving reactions for signs of drowsiness. Uh, plus, we welcome the optimised assistance SOS emergency call feature which is built into the standard remote app package. Now, that will transmit your location and diagnostic data to the emergency services in the event of an accident, and that could be a lifesaver. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the mid-range SE spec that most XE buyers tend to choose additionally adds traffic sign recognition and also a rear traffic monitor. Want to go further with camera-driven safety kit? Well, you can't if you've stretched up to top HSE spec because it has everything that Jaguar is prepared to offer to XE buyers. Uh, with the S and SE spec models, though, the brand gives you the option to add in the HSE variant's drive pack. As we mentioned earlier, this gives you blind spot assist along with adaptive cruise control. Plus, it builds on the standard autonomous braking functionality with a high-speed emergency braking system. Them. Blind spot assist can also be ordered separately. Here's an area in which this XC simply has to be on the pace. Business buyers rightly often feel that there's little to choose between the key contenders in the compact to mid-sized executive saloon market sector, and it's therefore not unusual for final decisions to be almost entirely based on things like fuel and CO2 readings, uh, depreciation too, and overall running costs. If you need a single answer as to why it took Jaguar so long to return to this segment in 2015, following the demise of the X-Type in 2009, then it's here that you'll find it. They just didn't have an engine that was efficient enough to enable them to properly compete. But these days they do, or at least that's what Jaguar will tell you. The British brand counters the media backlash against black pump fuel by reminding buyers that diesel engines offer around 25% better economy than petrol units. Uh, they produce around 15% less CO2 and they emit around the same amount of NOx, which for drivers who travel more than around 12,000 miles a year makes a diesel power plant a more cost-effective and environmentally friendlier choice than a petrol unit. But what about the XE's diesel engine? Well, in truth, this British-built 2-litre Ingenium unit has slipped a bit in terms of its fuel and CO2 showing against obvious rivals. Uh, the figures up to 50.7 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 130 grams per kilometre of NEDC-rated CO2. They're about 10% behind those you'd get from a directly comparable BMW 320d or Mercedes C220d. But from the launch of this revised XE model, uh, this Jaguar compensated by becoming the first car in its class to comply with the stringent RDE2 NOx emissions limit. Uh, this aids company car drivers with a useful 4% BIK tax rate cut, and it also helps private retail buyers with a reduced first-year VED charge. As we found with other JLR models, the alternative 2-litre Ingenium petrol unit is further behind the class standard in terms of cleanliness and frugality. In our experience, even more so in actual motoring than the official figures suggest. Uh, for reference, uh, for the base rear-driven P250 variant, these are up to 36.2 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 159 grams per kilometre of CO2. And for the all-wheel drive P300 flagship model, you're looking 
it up to 33.6 mpg and up to 167 grams per kilometer of CO2. Hence its very high 37% BIK rating. In comparison, the directly equivalent BMW 330i attracts a 31% charge. Uh, because of the relative age of this XE design, uh, there's no petrol plug-in hybrid option of the kind that BMW and Mercedes offer in the class. And all the figures we've just quoted assume, of course, that the driver is prepared to play his or her part and has selected the cleanest and most frugal eco setting from the Jaguar Drive driving mode system. If you'd studied the stats of this car before looking at the efficiency figures, then you might have expected a better running cost showing than the one that we've just outlined. It is, after all, the most aerodynamic Jaguar ever made with a slippery 0.26 CD drag coefficient. Uh, the usual engineering measures like particulate filters for the petrol units, selective catalytic reduction for exhaust gas after treatment, an engine stop and start system, and a selectable eco drive drive mode setting are all in place and over 75% of the structure is uh, fashioned from lightweight aluminium. Uh, that's a proportion that far exceeds that of any other car in this class. Unfortunately though, the weight saving that that generates is more than negated by the bulky weight of the complicated integral link suspension setup that the engineers insisted on for this car. The net result of that is a typical XE D180 is significantly heavier than some of its competitors. Uh, BMW 320D, for example, weighs 115 kilos less and that has to have an effect. Obviously, your driving is going to play a crucial part in the efficiency process, uh, something that this XE's technology wants to help you improve. The Touch Pro infotainment screen's eco data section offers an energy impact driving style display to help here, and it shows you your recent efficiency success uh, when it comes to three areas. Uh, those areas are accelerator, speed and engine, and brake. There's also a history screen graphically showing how your running cost figures have stacked up from recent journeys. And and rather cringingly, it awards you a little trophy for the most frugal one. As for engine technology, well, the diesel engine, like uh, the units you'll find in every rival, uses AdBlue, a urea-based liquid that's squirted into the hot exhaust to neutralize many of the harmful gases that would otherwise be blown out into the surrounding atmosphere. The AdBlue tank will need to be filled up regularly, although it can last up to 9,000 miles, and your Jaguar dealer will charge around 30 pounds to fill that up. If you have taken out one of the brand's available service plans, though, uh, those top-ups are included for free. Uh, there is a standard mileage service plan which covers you for five years and 50,000 miles or a high mileage service plan which covers uh, five years and 75,000 miles. Both packages include engine oil and filters, uh, checking and topping up brake fluid, and a 24-month guarantee on any replacement parts. Service intervals are set at 21,000 miles or every 24 months, whichever comes first. An XE might also cost you slightly more to insure than most of its key competitors. Uh, rating start off at Group 26 for this D180 diesel and climb to Group 33 for a top spec petrol P300. And it's worth pointing out that much of the range will incur the government's £320 annual VED surcharge for cars priced over £40,000. Uh, the predicted residuals are pretty class competitive though. Industry experts reckon that the car will hold on to between 40 and 43% of its original value after the industry standard three-year 36,000 mile ownership period. What else? Well, you get the usual unremarkable three-year warranty, although at least unlike Audi and Lexus, Jaguar doesn't put any limits on mileage. Uh, there is also an in-control protect service that allows you to monitor vital stats on your car from your smartphone and which will uh, guide the breakdown services to your XE should it ever have a problem. Uh, also included is three years of European cover and a promise to get you on your way as soon as possible in your own car or in a loan vehicle if the required repair will take longer than four hours. And finally, you might want to know that the XE is more recyclable than the class norm thanks to its structure's use of a special high-strength aluminium alloy that's known as RC5754, and it's made predominantly from recycled material.
Back in the 60s, Jaguar's classic Mark II model was arguably the market's original sports saloon. This XE, its most credible successor, is now back in class contention and it certainly now feels more like a proper Jaguar than it ever did before. We just hope that the changes made here haven't come too late to save this model line. Strategists at the Coventry Company must, after all, be questioning any future XE model's place in a rationalised, revitalised lineup of future designs, a range likely to be primarily made up of SUVs and the old sports car. With the long-term fate of the Mark's larger XF and XJ sedans being similarly uncertain, could we really be facing a future in which the brand arguably responsible for inventing the luxury saloon becomes no longer a significant player in any part of that segment? We hope not. The XC shows that Jaguar can bring something to this kind of car that no other rival brand can quite replicate. Mainstream buyers in this sector may often have previously ignored this car's sublime balance of ride and handling, but those who've tried one and who've appreciated the exemplary drive dynamics in play here have often found it hard to walk away from ownership. Prior to this facelift, uh, those people had to overlook quite a lot to sign a cheque for an XE, but this revised model's smarter cabin, its better value proposition, and its improved diesel efficiency make it a much more palatable proposition. Of course, there are still lots of reasons why this small Jaguar saloon might not stack up for you. There are no really affordable entry-level engines, there's no estate body style, and as an owner, you'll be more restricted in terms of cargo room and rear passenger space than you would be in an obvious rival. But keep this car on your shortlist anyway, and then go and drive it. It's a kind of car that, when driven hard, makes some others in the segment feel distinctly one-dimensional. Jaguar founder Sir William Lyons insisted that a sports saloon of this kind must make you feel alive. This one does. He'd have liked it.